You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution. X-Men number one. Written by Jed McKay, pencils by Ryan Stegman, inks by J.P. Mayer, colors by Marty Garcia, and uh, letters all the way down there. VCs Clayton Coles, that makes sense. And uh, here we go. It's the From the Ashes, A New Beginning. I'm not the biggest Jed McKay fan anymore. And it's funny, me and you talk about this a lot. We're more the Black Cat Jed McKay fan than even the Moon Knight. People Mm -hmm. love his Moon Knight. I guess it'll go down. Because it was real popular, whatnot, but there's a lot of stuff I'm, that he does. Uh, yeah, that, I'm not even looking forward to that reset of Moon Knight. I read that zero issue thing, and I'm like, uh, I don't want to. Yeah, uh. it's one of those things. This is how it reminds me. Like I'll say that. Yeah, I, I kind of like Jeff McKay. It's cool. <laughs> it's like me talking about The Simpsons, where I say we're now, unfortunately, Star Wars. It's like, oh man, I love The Simpsons. I love Star Wars. Then I start thinking, I'm like. I only like 10 seasons of The Simpsons. There's way more stuff that There's I don't like. There's like 30 more. Yeah. So the thing is, I could say I, I love Jed McKay, but boy, there's been some stinkers. And he has the ability somehow for people. I guess the stinkers like Death of Doctor Strange, I wasn't a huge fan. Timeless, I wasn't that big a fan. of, And the event, Avengers. some of these just seem to like go under the radar. So yeah, I just, I don't know. But. This is the start, obviously. It's the big book. It's it's going to kick us off. And I, I didn't think it was that great. I, I thought that the story was a bit convoluted. And really, I don't. I think that this is a start to just get characters thrown out there. There's not that much of a story, actually. They end up where it's a rescue mission to grab Wolverine and find some new mutants that popped up on Cerebro. In the meantime, Beast is walking a police officer around in this Alaskan town. It's outside of Merle, Alaska, where they have set up their base. The big wow moment is, oh, my God, the base is actually a former Sentinel factory. All right. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing that's good about that is, I was going to say location, location, location. It's it's actually that it's big. (laughs) You have to have it pretty big. And it's like to, Avengers Mountain or whatever that stupid thing we had to like, deal with. It makes sense. I mean, yeah. you have all this, and it's gonna have it's gonna be wired for a lot of you know all the things that yeah, they it's need. It's got everything you need. But what it ends up being is Beast walking this cop around. She straight up, we said from Fargo slash Northern Exposure type deal. And she's wowed by the mutants, and but but the people in town. Yeah, she, see, she sees Beast and you. Oh yeah, yeah. She's like, oh my god. And <laughs> I, I I'm saying the same thing because this Beast I'm going on the record is horrible. Now, yeah, I'm not. I'm not a big fan. And here's the thing: I'm a I'm a big fan of Ryan Stegman. I yeah. really like Ryan Stegman. I am too. He's Sorry. my top five artist easily. This is inconsistent, and it ends up getting towards a bit too cartoony at times, and it just looks weird at points. Now. Even the idea where this cop shows up, and I swear to God, she shows up, and I'm not shaming anybody, but this woman loses like 20 pounds immediately. Yeah. Like yeah, she's she, outside. she ages too. She's a young person to an old person. Uh, she's tall. She's it's short. It's really odd. But again, the big giant wow moment is that the, the X Men have set up in the Sentinel factory, and they he takes a while to get to that, and <laughs> and then it's then the idea. Where it's it's like the Billy Joel song, Allentown. That's like 10 minutes yeah. from I me. Mean, the idea that this town was based on making Sentinels. I don't know what they did for the other, because that didn't last that Yeah, that long. was about, what, three months That's of what their I'm lifetimes? saying. I mean, th- this town has got some problems. Maybe they just sold it out. It was like the uh, monorail in she, The Simpsons. This lady they, rolls up in there trying to, like, get them to get this factory going again. They're like... They're building sentinels. Yeah, I'd love to that. They're like, I love it. It's like, why aren't you building sentinels? It's like, there's, there's one <laughs> big reason, but there's some. But she's taking the walking tour of the factory that she probably knows better than Beast does, but it's the what we've done, how we've renovated and what they've done is grow a garden in there. And they're inside. They're inside this factory. You would guess that Beast, smart guy, they have a lot of tech, whatever. They're growing things. At one point, this cop near the end says, why would you come to Alaska and try to grow things? Ladies, they're inside. They're, they have this technology to end up being able to do that. That's why they're there. I think that the play is they could be anywhere. Mm-hmm. It's just here and it's a big factory, whatnot. 
But yeah, what what are they? I I think that she's there for a handout. She wants money or something to give to the townspeople. Well, she's like, what know. am I gonna what am I gonna tell the town? Like they're expecting to restart this thing. Like, uh. also remember that when she first meets Beast, she has to spell out that the factory was closed. <laughs> It wasn't the idea that the X-Men came in and closed it. It was closed. So nothing's happening. Lady, they're not making settle. Stop. Yeah. Start going back Stop to your it. knickknacks or something. Snow globes. I don't What were you doing before? <laughs> so you end up there. But then it's Jed McKay. And throughout this whole issue, Jed McKay has dialogue that is so forced and unnatural to name every single X-Men I think he's heard. And it, it really felt at times to be a list to, hey, I know these X-Men. Look, I know all the psychic X-Men. There's a point where Wolverine, he just won't shut up. And so you have Glob here. Again, an obscure kind of cat. I like Glob. But it's there just to be Glob. And then later they say, like, what is his ability? What's he? He's good at nothing. I'm like, poor Glob. He has a heart of gold, that guy. And you could see it right through him. But yeah, even then they're <laughs> just going. And then in the meantime, you have that rescue mission where you have pretty much the team going into rescue Wolverine. And you have Cyclops. You end up having Psylocke, Kid Omega, Temper Magic, and Juggernaut. Juggernaut was one of the people that pe- rolled their eyes. Why are we doing this? It shouldn't be on the team. And a lot of people hate Kid Omega. I kind of like Kid Omega. But Juggernaut, I thought, might be cool. But he is comedy relief. He's there for Magic and him to do the you know, Legolas and Gimli of who's going to kill the most people and who's going to get there first and who's going to do that. They're playing rock, paper, scissors at one point and they both of them always shoot rock because that's the strongest. Is that what they're solid. playing? I, uh, what they, they called it something else, though. I don't know yeah, what that that's, was. That's what they're, they're like, hey, this isn't working. You're a wimp. And he says, she says, you, or he's, uh, no, she does. You keep picking rock. And I'm like, hey, what I'm picking because yeah, I'm not a wimp. The thing is, Pick paper and win. I mean, that that's what you do, but it's supposed yeah. to be comedy. They're doing that until, boom, they get called in. They just jump out and they're yeah, just the assault crazy. Team they're called. Yeah, the assault team, and they just go nuts. They just stop. But again, that's in the background. It really doesn't mean much as they rip through things. The team comes in. It's like, that art looks okay. Quentin, he's cursing it up. All this to save the save Wolverine, who's captured by Orcus, dressed up. You meant all these things plus yeah, they're in like, this. They're in the aim outfits, they're painted in the red. aim outfits, and then Quentin at one point says, What? Why are they doing that? And they have to make a joke. But again, it's to give info, but not info needed for a story. Info of, Look at me. I know this. Quentin went to the school. Quentin did this. He's a bad boy. He was dating Temper. Oh, my goodness. So all that runs in. Well, this is the line where a Wolverine, because he's there, and there's a big boom, boom, and these orcas. X deals and like, oh my God, what's that? And Wolverine says, Oh, that's X Men. They're coming for me. And you wouldn't want to be in the way. And the guy goes, Wait, you're not psychic. There's no way you could have called them or no. And this is what Wolverine says. I don't get I don't gotta be psychic, but Jean Grey, Emma Frost, Quinn <laughs> Choir, Celeste, Esme, Mindy, Phoebe, and Sophie Cuckoo. By that time, these guys are probably like stabbing him. Like I would be like, we get it. I get it. You know all the psychic people that could show up. I'm like, yeah, really? it's, it's over the top. It's over the top. And and so in this, if you are a fan of Grant Morrison's like new X Men, you'll get a kick because they mentioned John Sublime. But when they end up saying it, they're like, man, maybe John Sublime was right, and they had the third species. But now that's AI. That I'm like, what? What are you doing? None of this really feels like. Yeah, I mean, a you're story. reading through that stuff now. Eventually, you'll uh, you'll hit that, and you'll be like, "Oh, that's what he was yeah, talking I, about." I, yeah, and me and my man Gray, if you on our not even on our just our Patreon, he has it on his uh, YouTube channel too. Yeah. That we end up going through Grant Morrison stuff, and we have done a bunch of the new X Men. We had the John Sublime stuff, and he jumped out of yeah because he, it's also you got Quentin Choir, Glob, and and these are all Grant Morrison things you men they mentioned that that's they a part mentioned of it. the you men and but it's it's fan service it's mm-hmm. lip service it's not doing anything with the story it's just giving you the look at me info it's very weird because overall what the story is is beast giving the walking tour to a cop in the town and to reveal they're in the sentinel factory 
and the team going out and saving Wolverine. That, but yet it's oversized and feels like it should be more. It, because- it gets complicated with that uh, the, the fourth generation or whatever they call of the, the people. So there's humans, there's mutants, there's AI, and then there's some kind of combination and of them. And that's where, again, that's the combo. It, it, it gets to be the John Sublime stuff. And what he what that is. Yeah, 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 that's and the deal. And I'm like, okay. So then we move on and you have all the stuff Psylocke does come in and then they get and save Wolverine who's all caught up. And he's and even that, it's like Wolverine after all this time, he comes out, he sees Cyclops and he says, good to see you, Slim, which is kind of weird. And says, and, <laughs> and the rest of you, sorry, muties, give me a second. My healing factor is still knitting me back together. I wanted Cyclops to go, dude, I've known you for decades i understand <laughs> you have a healing factor and you're getting stitched up and so does everybody else here and so you just keep doing stuff like that quentin he's like oh no all this stuff and and you'll always have like these lines of man remember back when i was at the school and scott would always yell at me and then scott would be there i was yelling at you to teach you and it's just nothing and then when you do this then you end up where you have Mr. Zorn who gets, but Grant Morrison character. Yeah, Grant Morrison character. And hey, this is Mr. Zorn. And the cop's like, pleased to meet you. I'll shake your hand. <laughs> Ooh, most people get upset about my face. And she goes, you are all freaks, basically. But what are you, what are you doing? And then all of a sudden, even when the one point where the aim looking like, they like come crashing through the city. I don't know what's going on at points in this. They're like, had they have powers because they're that weird fourth mutant. So thing. it's weird. Like they're going to attack. Then you go up on the roof where Beast and the cop and the Magneto comes down, and Magneto has to start telling you what he's done in the past. Where he ends up saying at the one point, it was fear of me that honed Scott who uh, into a leader and made Gene strong enough to weld. Cosmic power gave Warren the strength to survive. I'm like, dude, you're just having these characters it's, just spout history. It's of- weird too because they they try to make it look like he's maybe Professor X in a like a pimp outfit or whatever. I don't know what he's wearing, but it's actually he. Why is he riding around there? I don't know. Because who who wants to touch the ground when you don't <laughs> have to? I mean, the guy's like, I don't need to you know walk around. I got this chair, and then even then it's like even the line. You end up and it's it Max, Max, Max. So the yeah, Magneto Max. comes down and he's like, oh, hey, Max, I was just showing the chief of police our little operation. She goes, Magneto. And then he says, she's going for her gun. Why is that, do you think? Because you're frightening. Yeah, because uh, yeah, you're Magneto. And <laughs> why are you talking like this? And, and again, it's supposed to be that grandiose Magneto talk. It just came off weird. And then he just goes down like, hey. Get this, you want to know what I'm all about? It's the fear of me that made all these people, and even Charles, it gave you steel, but I tempered it. Like, yeah, you know, it's it's not good. It I I don't hate it, and I'm sure there's some people who are gonna go nuts and tell us we're morons. That's why you can go listen to the yeah, like it's a good point because it, yeah, we need a deep dive. Go to them because I, I need I need I need Jason to research what how is Quentin Quire back. Why is he younger? Like, things like that. Like <laughs> I don't know that research is going to end up telling you anything. <laughs> and I end up thinking that there are a lot of things going on in this that make no sense. Uh, but again... Maybe it doesn't matter. You're right. We're maybe. having fun and, and talking about it. But really, I thought that you had a very, very, I mean, a basic bitch story. I mean, yeah. there is not much going on here. But Jed McKay is trying to muck it up to make it feel like a lot of swipes to this scene to that scene when you go to do nothing and then go back to do nothing and the big excitement is the saving of wolverine that gets mixed up with the orcus x you know aim guys running around like goofballs there's a bit of weird tone going on it's just beast that the big thing should be that the big attack on the deal and to rescue Mag- and they say six other mutants that pinged but well the, the six other mutants that pinged are those i aim guess guys. are the aim guys yeah, yeah. that was the deal because so. they have some mutant genes in them yeah, it's very odd that wasn't even really spelled out that much as yeah. he's talking it is interrupted so you're right 
And that's Quentin like, oh my god, they're adults Because they're supposed to be kids when they manifest but Yeah, they're actually yeah, adults. it's like, and even then I, I don't know why they're thinking it Like it suddenly pinged or whatever But I guess because they were kind of manufactured I gotta check this out on the higher resolution copies too Because, I mean, I I think when they when they were developing this book I, I want to say that Stegman is really the top The top billing and, and uh, Jed McKay is the second tier on this But But the art's a little weird yeah, yeah, the art is a little, it's a little wonky. Yeah, and, and there's no way they're going to be able to keep up this schedule that they need for this, too. There's going yeah, to have we'll to fill see. in artists yeah, and all we'll, that we'll stuff. we'll have to see the deal. But again, you have this, then you have Uncanny X-Men, the deal with Gail Simone. I'm hoping that's good. But each one I mention, it gets less and less of me having any optimism. X-Factor? X-Factor, that's, I think, Jeffrey Thorne, not a huge fan. And Wolverine Revenge. And then that that seems like a different deal, but then we get NYX. Mm -hmm. We get, you know, that's exceptional X-Men with e-viewing, that sort Mm -hmm. of thing. And I'm like, these have to hit. You know what I mean? Like, you have to hit with the books that need to hit, the big bangers, and that's X-Men and Uncanny. Then X-Factor to a lesser degree, but still... This wasn't great. What would you give it? Uh, I'm still optimistic about it. I do. I do. Uh, I'm appreciative of the re, re, reset. I guess uh, from the ashes stuff. So I'm, I'll give it a seven. Yeah, I'm. I'm a. Um, I could give it a six. Some okay. of you, it's good. And and I don't know. Six seems high. For me. <laughs> it feels like I'm like I'm telling you. I I just can't. I'm going to give it a five five. I have to end with a five five. I just didn't like it that much. I mean, it, it, listen. I mean, long term. X Men readers will appreciate this. I think it just kind of has it. It, it's, it's it has weird. some some things going on that you can appreciate, but it misses in some places. Yeah. When I'm talking to people, there's a lot of people who don't like the Grant Morrison stuff, especially what he ended up doing to some, and so that might turn people. But it's just it's weird. It's it's just a lot but, of lip service and stuff. And 